Joining us now, Democratic Congressman Steve Cohen of Tennessee, a member of the Judiciary Committee in the House who was just reelected, and Lawrence Tribe, Harvard Law professor and constitutional scholar. And Professor Tribe, I want to start with you on this question that has now been, uh, and we've had 48 hours of public consideration of it, and that is the legality of uh, mm -hmm. the installation of Matthew Whitaker in the Attorney General's office. Well, hi, Lawrence. I, I guess I, I'm going to say at the beginning that you've almost made me feel sorry for the guy. <laughs> but but I, I think I can resist feeling too sorry for him. He has no legitimacy, quite apart from the stupid things he's said and the fact that he's obviously not a good lawyer and the fact that he's a fraudster, it seems. The fact that there is no constitutional basis for treating him as legitimate. The Appointments Clause of the Constitution makes clear that anyone with the kinds of responsibilities that this guy would have as the chief law enforcement officer of the United States, supervising not only the Mueller probe, but the, every district court in the country and every fraud investigation, um, any such person has to be not simply nominated by the president, but confirmed by the Senate. It's not a little technicality, it's a really big deal. And I could go on at much more length than you or your viewers would be interested in about why all of the Supreme Court precedents establish that the Constitution means exactly what it says. So we don't have to go chasing after, you know, technical statutory squirrels when there is a constitutional elephant in the room. Everything he does, as you said, is without legal effect. If he tries to squeeze Mueller, to restrict his options, to deny him the right to subpoena something, Mueller has no reason to respect that. Mueller could just disregard it or he could go to court and get a judgment that says that he's been given an order by basically a buffoon with no legal standing uh, to give that order. And. Uh Congressman Cohen, uh, your reaction to, to this acting attorney general and what the House <clears throat> Judiciary Committee uh, might do under Democratic control in January, uh, you can uh, request his testimony under oath in that committee. Well, we certainly can. We could have uh, him come before the committee. We could subpoena any papers of Mueller reports that he might have tried to squelch and keep from the American public. And we, we had a conference call today. And to this week, uh, uh, Ranking Member Nadler has uh, got all of us together, and we've uh, shared our ideas, and we're going to try to pursue some actions in conjunction with the Senate. I think the Senate might have standing to pursue a legal action questioning his appointment, for they were harmed, as was Mr. Rosenstein, and being uh, uh, not having the opportunity to advise and consent as they're supposed to. And Mr. Rosenstein was uh, uh, stepped over. He should have been the logical person in the order of a. Uh, 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 ascendancy in the in the Justice Department to take on this acting role. Uh, this fellow, as you call it, he's acting. He is indeed only acting. He's not the Attorney General. And it's as it's, it's, it's if uh, Don Corleone appointed uh, Luca Brasi as consigliere. Uh, obviously not because he thought he was the best for advice, but because he had, had people he wanted to knock off. And, uh, Professor Tribe, uh, the president is uh, one of the most transparent, criminally-minded people that we've ever had in public life. Mm -hmm. He has He's publicly on record for a couple of years now saying that he wanted a Roy Cohn type uh, in the attorney general's office who would take care right. of him, who would protect him. Roy Cohn himself was a criminal and a disbarred lawyer uh, uh, who uh, operated exactly the way Donald Trump would want. And so you have this public uh, set of statements by the president of actually wanting uh, criminal conduct out of his attorney general. And then you have <clears throat> install someone who has made these public comments that are fully compatible uh, with what Donald Trump wants, which is closing down the investigation. Right. Well, Donald Trump seems to have an amazing compulsion to confess. I mean, he went on national television and confessed to Lester Holt that the reason he fired James Comey was to prevent the Russia probe from going forward and to protect his former national security advisor.
now makes it clear by picking someone who basically auditioned for the job of Hatchet Man, for the job of his Roy Cohn, uh, he picks a guy who transparently has no qualifications for the job except that he's loyal to this president. Uh, it, it's really quite remarkable. He's very, you know, Trump is wily, he's cunning, but he seems just incapable of hiding his own criminality. I think Rachel Maddow in the preceding hour got it right that he has all these tells when he says <laughs> something over and over and over again, like, I don't know. Whitaker, I don't know Whitaker. You know he's lying. The more he says mm -hmm. it, the more obvious it is that he's lying. And Congressman Cohen, in, <clears throat> in your discussions with the uh, incoming democratically controlled uh, Judiciary Committee, uh, do, do you, what is what has been the reaction to Donald Trump saying in the press conference this week that uh, he will it will become warfare? If you in the democratically controlled House do any investigating of the Trump administration, then uh, he would consider that warfare and he would somehow, somehow have you investigated. I don't know if that means by uh, the person he's installed in the attorney general's office or he hopes by uh, Republican controlled committees in the Senate trying to investigate you. Well, it was a rather b bizarre statement. And I think we all agree basically with Adam Schiff, who is not a member of the Judiciary Committee, who said it's been warfare for the last two years. And, and nobody on the Democratic side has cowered because of that warfare that we've endured, nor are we concerned about the warfare that may come in the next two years. We've taken an oath to uphold the Constitution, to represent what we think are the values of the American people who've elected us, and we're going to pursue what is the legislative authority of oversight, and we're going to do that regardless if uh, we're uh, basically supported by the president who doesn't want any oversight. That's part of the process. And the founding fathers saw checks and balances as being an uh, important part of our system. And we haven't had that the last two years. The House of Representatives is known as the People's House, partially because we're all elected by the people, not appointed. But we are the People's House. We've been the House of Trump the House of Devin Nunez, the House of Bob Goodlatte, who have done absolutely zero to check this president who has shown lawless tendencies and arrogance toward the law, and, and that's going to stop. And his threats are not going to stop Jerry Nadler or any member of the, of the House Judiciary Committee from doing proper and uh, appropriate oversight. And, and Professor I, Tribe, before we go, I, I just yeah. wanted to ask you one more thing about the 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 scope, the, the range of the risk that the Justice Department now suffers with what the president has done. And and is it is it conceivable mm -hmm. that criminal defendants, for example, around the country in federal cases, if there's a if there's some decision about their case that has been made at the attorney general level, that's been made by Matthew Whitaker or approved by Matthew Whitaker, does that open up an avenue of appeal to criminal defendants around the country to say uh, this is an illegitimate <clears throat> uh, prosecutorial action because there is no attorney general in the, in, in, on this document? <clears throat> I would certainly expect defendants to do that. It would be kind of ironic to see Donald Trump Jr. arguing that his dad appointed an unconstitutional guy uh, to prosecute him, and therefore the indictment against him should be dismissed. I don't think <laughs> that that was exactly what Trump had in mind, but he but he might have. And I could could I add just one thing? I think mm -hmm. Representative Cohen made a very important point when he talked about the warfare that's being declared on the House. But it's not just bizarre. For the President of the United States to say to one branch of the U.S. government, if you perform your function and get too close to bothering me, I'm going to go to war against you. That is not only an out of, you know, out of the box statement, it's part of an obstruction of justice. It's an impeachable move to say that I'm going to retaliate in various ways to make your life difficult if you perform your constitutional functions is essentially obstruction of justice on stilts, on steroids. And I think that the House Judiciary Committee is going to have to look closely at that in January. Professor Lawrence Tribe, thank you for joining us. Congressman Steve Cohen, thank you Thanks. very much for joining us. Really appreciate it.